Welcome back to Morning Joe at 46 past the hour. Here with us now, columnist for the Washington Post, Kathleen Parker. A uh, lot to talk to you about this morning. Um, what was that you just said about the truth? I said there's no profit in telling the truth, oh. but that's because I live in Washington. That's true, actually. <laughs> that's a whole different conversation. I've been all, the, all the excerpts of Mark Leibowitz's book. book uh, I and know. Fascinating. I can't wait to read the whole thing. Did everybody go to the index? I, is there isn't one. There is some sort of index that you're Some paper. official, unofficial one. Oh, well, I asked him. I said, I, t I texted him. I said, I can't wait to read the whole thing. Where are you, where are you planning to retire? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he said, anywhere but here. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get to that. We're going to have him on the show. Uh, and I, I'm very scared to read that. Um, here's a part of your piece in the Washington Post uh, about the Trayvon Martin case. A bullet through the heart. And this is such an interesting question that you raised. It was chilling, really. Suddenly, this high-stakes trial has become a test of the credibility of two mothers. Does maternal instinct convince these mothers that they are right, or does maternal instinct compel each to protect her son, regardless of what may be true? Second guessers have an array of questions to entertain. Would a mother lie about such a thing? Could she? Would she wish another woman's son convicted on the basis of her sense of things? Can she know with certainty that the voice in the background, barely audible, is that of her son and not of the other man? The last question is most compelling. Can she? And I just thought about that as a mother myself, and I don't know the answer. <laughs> well, it raised so many interesting questions. Yeah. I, mean, I was just fascinated by these two mothers who testified on Friday. And, of course, we're talking about the 9-11 the call. You hear this person screaming in the background, was it Trayvon Martin or was it George Zimmerman? And, of right. course, the answer determines more likely who was who who was the one was it whether or not the 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 shooting was in an act right. of self-defense so very important the mothers of course each heard her own voice now i would would you recognize your your child's voice i i feel i would yeah tapes you know recordings distort things a little bit but basically we know someone's wrong right but we wouldn't go so far as to say someone's not telling the truth i i think i would i speak as a woman here i, I had a child who was injured and her cry i mean the different cries well make i know you my react physically voice, and yeah. i you know and he's now a young adult and I feel like if I heard him in distress, I would know. You it would was just his know voice. it. Yeah. From the time he was born, you know, yeah. I was racing down the hall because I could tell his voice from 30 other babies in the nursery. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a great piece. Everyone should look at it on WashingtonPost.com. We do want to ask you about Elliot Spitzer, uh, who is, and Joe's back with us here, who's running for comptroller in New York City, yeah. jumping back into politics. Um, we already argued a little bit about our argument about Elliot Spitzer, and I'll bring you into it now. Um, your take, having worked with him as a co-host that you did not know you were going to get. I believe you were sat down, given a job at another network, and then told who your co-host would be, and I don't know how long the show went. Well, that's not two years. exactly right. It was more... Um I mean, I knew by the time we sat down that he was going to be. Oh, yeah, we yeah. No, no, on not the, on the air. We, we did a little rehearsing. And, and I met Elliot for the first time, though, in preparation for the show that became Parker Spitzer. Um, and, you know, Elliot, like all people, is a complex figure. He mm -hmm. is. He can be beguiling and extremely charming. I, I assume everyone here has met him or had mm -hmm. some transactions. But as he's described himself, he can also be a steamroller. He has some powerful enemies in this, in this town. But I'll tell you something. I used to walk down the street with him uh, frequently, and people would race to speak to him. Cab drivers would cross four lanes of traffic and slam on brakes and say, Good morning, Governor. And, you know, there are, there are a lot of people who think highly of him. They certainly think he's competent um, in, in the role he wants to play now. Um, whether he can be forgiven, I don't know that Elliot's... You know, the things for which he's mo best known for are, are his greatest obstacles to mm -hmm. redemption. If that's what he's seeking, I think a lot of people um, question his style and, and kind of how he went about, you know, uh, going, going after Wall Street. So there's, there's a, there are many, many dimensions. Is it now. safe to say, given what you just said, that you might be slightly com conflicted uh, if you were to ask to analyze his return to politics? Well, look... I, th I think, you know, I wish Elliot the best. That's, that's where I would leave it. Okay, Kathleen, stay with us. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll try and figure out exactly what that means coming up. But first